Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to discuss the diagnosis and staging of bone tumors. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to clinically evaluate a patient with a suspected bone tumor. You should be able to interpret an X-ray of a bone tumor and to know the exact imaging studies and lab investigations required to reach a diagnosis and to be able to take a biopsy safely from a patient with a suspected bone tumor. The diagnosis and staging is a two-step process. Step one is the provisional diagnosis. And this is obtained by doing a thorough clinical evaluation and ordering x-rays and lab tests. Step two is where, the, where you reach the final diagnosis and staging. And this is done by doing assessing the local extent using a local MRI or CT, assessing the general extent by doing a chest CT and a bone scan or a PET CT, and finally confirming the diagnosis with a tissue diagnosis using a, a biopsy. Um, Clinical evaluation is the first step in reaching a diagnosis of a bone tumor. It includes uh, 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 personal history, uh, history of the present illness, past history, then local examination and general examination. The personal history is very important. Age is actually the most important uh, aspect because certain types of tumors occur in certain age periods. You never find uh, metastasis and myeloma in a child. On the other hand, chondroblastoma occurs, for example, in a skeletally immature. And it couldn't be part of the differential diagnosis in elderly people. Um, patients with bone tumors usually complain of either pain or swelling. And to lesser extent, they could present with pathological fracture and limping. The pain caused by bone tumor is very uh, characteristic. Uh, and you should actually uh, uh, analyze it uh, thoroughly. The pain is never regressive. It is either stationary, intermittent, or progressive, which could be slowly progressive or rapidly progressive. And there are certain red flags, like pain that awakes the patient in the middle of the night. This is a very alarming symptom and sh should arise the uh, suspicion that this is due to a bone tumor. Another note that you have to remember is that patients usually uh, relate their complaint to a traumatic episode, what we call traumatic determinism. So uh, they might come and say, well, uh, I have this pain since I fell, since I was hit by something. And this is the way the brain interprets the complaint. Uh, but the doctor should be very aware that it could be a pure coincidence and it's not necessarily related to the traumatic episode. Uh, past history is important, history of weight loss, history of previous malignancy, previous surgeries. Uh, then we move to a local examination, which should be done carefully uh, to avoid any uh, iatrogenic fracture of the uh, bone. Uh, you have to locate exactly the site of tenderness, uh, the location of the swelling, if it's attached to the bone, if it's superficial, if it's deep. You have to do a thorough neurological affection and assess the limb as a whole. General examination might be very useful also to uh, aid in the diagnosis. You have to look for other lesions, other deformities, lymph nodes, uh, cafeole patches, etc. For example, if you have a patient with a, a lesion uh, in, uh, in uh, for example, an osteochondroma, then you look for other uh, areas of the body and you find other swellings. This is the red three multiple exostosis, the patient with a destructive lesion. And then when you do a general examination, you find lymphadenopathy and then large liver and spleen. This could be a lymphoma. Uh, a patient with an osteolytic lesion, like this patient who presented to us with an osteolytic lesion of the proximal radius and the distal humerus. Uh, we were uh, part of the differential diagnosis could be hyperparathyroidism, it could be uh, or yes, disease, it could be uh, fibrous dysplasia. And just by doing a general examination and finding the cafe or lay patches, we reach the diagnosis even without taking a biopsy. After finishing the clinical evaluation, we have to evaluate the X-ray of the patient. If he's not done one, you have to order one. It should be of a good quality. It should 
be done in two views. And there is no substitute for a good quality X-ray to diagnose a patient with a bone tumor. He can't just give you an MRI and that's it. An X-ray is the must to diagnose. And you as well have to interpret it in the proper way. So how do we read an X-ray? You ask yourself four questions. Where is the lesion? What is the lesion doing to the bone? How is the bone responding? And is there anything specific about this lesion? So the first question, where is the lesion? We mean which bone? Uh, is it an axial or a long bone? Is it in the epiphysis, diaphysis, metaphysis? If it's in the vertebra, is it uh, occurring in the body of the vertebra or the posterior elements? Is it a medullary lesion or a surface lesion? Like, for example, in this uh, uh, X-ray, uh, if we answer the question, where is the lesion? It would be in the metaphyseal, diaphyseal area of a femur of a skeletally immature patient. The second question would be, what is the lesion doing to the bone? Either it's an osteoblastic, osteolytic, or both. And in this uh, x-ray, we say it's an osteoblastic lesion. Uh, the third question would be, what is the bone doing to the lesion? We mean by the uh, zone of transition or the margin and the periosteal reaction. So it's either an ill-defined margin or a well-defined margin. And here, it's definitely an ill-defined margin. Uh, the periosteal reaction in this X-ray is evident. You see a codman triangle, you see sunburst uh, appearance. The fourth question would be, is there anything specific about the tumor? You see any ossification, calcification, soft tissue mass? Is there any fracture? Is there any multiple lesions in the same bone or the surrounding bones? Etc. And in this case, we will find that there is uh, evident ossification inside the bone and in the uh, periosteal reaction. So this is how we interpret an X-ray. The next step would be doing lab tests. So are lab tests necessary when you're evaluating a primary bone tumor? Actually, they are not. They're only of value when you're suspecting a myeloma or metastasis. There are no tumor markers for osteosarcoma or chondrosarcoma or urine sarcoma. There is no need to order them unless you're suspecting myeloma or metastasis. Moreover, the CBC and ESR are not specific. You can't say this patient has a high ESR and then hence he has a bone tumor or he hasn't a bone tumor. So they're not specific. Alkaline phosphatase as well, it might be high, but it might be high due to other reasons. So these are very non-specific tests. The lab becomes very important if you're suspecting myeloma or metastasis, and they could be of great help to diagnose, like plasma protein electrophoresis and immunoelectrophoresis if you're suspecting myeloma, and tumor markers like PSA, alpha cytoprotein, and carcinoembryonic antigen, et cetera, when you're looking for a primary. We do a calcium and parathormone to rule out hyperparathyroidism as one of the differential diagnoses. Chest CT is the must while staging a patient with a bone uh, with a malignant bone tumor. It detects the presence of metastasis, it detects their number and location. Spiral CT is actually more accurate, and CTs are done without contrast. You don't need a contrast to do a chest CT uh, to diagnose the presence of metastasis and it could not be replaced by a plain X-ray of the chest. A bone scan would, is a very sensitive, but not specific study, because infections, fractures, etc., could show uptake. However, the bone scan is of value to detect skip lesion, uh, bone metastasis, multicentric tumors, etc. We should also remember that there are certain types of tumor are cold on scan, like the myeloma and histiocytosis. MRI is the most important local imaging modality. It helps us to assess the geography of the tumor, the local extent of the tumor, and we order an MRI with contrast. The aim of the MRI is to detect the intraosseous extent and the extraosseous extent, to detect skip lesion, to detect joint involvement, the relationship of the vessels to the tumor, and gives a clue about the consistency of the tumor. If you look to the X-ray to the left, this is an X-ray of an osteosarcoma of the distal femur, but you cannot by any means from the X-ray know the extent of the tumor. Whereas coronal cuts in the MRI, you can exactly measure the length of the intraosseous extent. You could uh, 
exactly know the uh, extra osseous extent, the relationship of the uh, vessels to the tumor. Here you can see a definite clear fat plane between them. And hence you can uh, uh, decide your uh, plan of dissection. MRI is also helpful to detect intraarticular extent, like in this case. You cannot know this information from the x ray. The relationship of the vessels here, the vessels are close to the tumor. This is an example of vessels inside the uh, tumor. It can aid you to make your cut uh, whenever you're resecting part of the bone, like this patient with a parosteal osteosarcoma. The MRI as well gives you an idea about the consistency of the tumor. Is it cystic, like in this case, is it cartilaginous, is it swollen of bone, etc. The CT is not of value in local assessment of the tumor like the MRI. It just has an edge when there is a pathological fracture or when there is calcification in the tumor. But an MRI is by far more superior. CT is of value maybe in assessing cartilaginous tumor, like in this case with the chondral sarcoma of the proximal femur. Other extra investigations that could be used in staging are whole body MRI and PET CT. These two imaging modalities uh, could help in assessment of the whole body as a whole, but they are not routinely used. CT angiography also is not routinely done, and it is useful in detecting the relationship of the tumor to the vessel. Now we come to the final part of the staging, which is the biopsy. It should be the last stage in biopsy. It should be closed or open, closed like fine needle aspiration or true cut uh, biopsy. It could be guided by sonar or by CT, and it is as sensitive and specific as open biopsy. Uh, moreover, it is it has more advantages than the open biopsy. It's less morbid, less cost, less complications. And it's done with a true cut needle or gem CD needle like we see here. An open biopsy could be catastrophic for the patient unless it is done properly and adhering to strict guidelines. In order to do a proper biopsy, you should understand that the biopsy creates a contaminated tract. If the tumor turned out to be malignant, this tract will be resected with the main specimen as one block like we see in this picture. The guidelines are as follows. It has to be done under complete sterile conditions. If you're going to use a tourniquet, you never do exsanguination. The site should be away from the vital structures. It has to be a longitudinal incision in line with the possible future incision, like we see in the picture. It has to be perpendicular to, to the tumor through the muscles and never going through planes. You never use bone levers, always use retractors. If the tumor has a soft tissue extent, do not violate the bone. If the tumor is intraosseous, you make an oval hole in the bone using a drill. Never use osteotomes and hammer. Ample tissues should be retrieved, adequate hemostasis, even if you need to stop the bleeding with wax or with bone cement. If a drain is used, it should be uh, it should exit in line with the incision. The wound is closed uh, tightly in continuous sutures, and the limb should be splinted. The tissues should be uh, put in formalin or formalin with water, never in saline. And the whole tissues should be sent to one pathologist. These are examples of inadequate biopsies. You should never do this. You should never let the biopsy track pass through the rectus muscles or uh, posteriorly adjacent to the sciatic nerve, or never use a drain that exits away from the uh, uh, line of incision to contaminate, to do another contaminated track. Finally, our take-home messages from this lectures are as follows. Patients with bone tumors present with pain, swelling, pathological fracture, or limping. You have to know the characteristics of pain. Uh, to interpret an X-ray of a bone tumor, you need to ask yourself four questions. The lab tests are only required when you're suspecting metastasis or myeloma. Staging entails doing local MRI, chest CT, and bone scan. Biopsy is done at the end of the staging process, and it could be closed biopsy or open biopsy. It is crucial to take a biopsy according to specific guidelines to avoid any catastrophic failure.
Thank you very much.